Exciting news today, folks, as Salty Simulations has finally released its hotly anticipated EFB or electronic flight bag tablet for their freeware Boeing 747-8 mod in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, if you completely forgot that this was even in the works, you couldn't be blamed as it's been in silent development for months now. But as all good things come to those who wait, it's finally available and, in my opinion, looks pretty awesome. In this video, we'll be covering all the new features like Navigraph charts integration, SimBrief connectivity, real-time weather data, and even ground services and door controls that have finally brought the 747 up to par with other airliner add-ons. Now, the main reason why I personally chose to still fly the default 747 even when the Salty version was available for the past few months is because the Asobo version actually incorporated the updates from the latest working title Aircraft and Avionics 2 update made available by Asobo and Microsoft, which significantly improved the system stability and logic for the 747 and unfortunately just wasn't available on the Salty Simulations version. However, I'm happy to also report that this version of the 747 with this update from Salty Simulations has now been fully enhanced to leverage the latest avionics update from Microsoft Flight Simulator, so at this point there's really no reason to not download the Salty Simulations mod if you are on PC of course. However, before getting into all of these EFB features, one thing the developers haven't added in this update is the ability to control your flight from anywhere in the world even when you're not next to your PC necessarily. However, our sponsor for this video has you covered in that regard. Awesome is a free to download application software from macOS, Windows, and Android that allows you to remotely control your PC using your phone. As can be seen here, I can monitor my flight, control the cameras, and even move things around as needed without having to be anywhere near my monitor. As a content creator, I get great peace of mind when I can monitor the status of my video being rendered on my editing software and having the ability to upload videos to YouTube without physically being at my desk or computer is an absolute godsend. The app does allow keyboard customization as well as mouse support and can also support games up to 144 FPS. So log on to the link in the description section of the video to see all of their expanded payment plans, including a pluggable device that can wake up your PC remotely. Once again, that's Awesome Remote and you can find out more by clicking on the link in the description section of the video. So let's start things off by taking a look at the settings pane. So what do we have here? It's all modeled after the iPad UI, as you can clearly see. Um, this very much looks like the iPad UI and you can even see my SimBrief name already set up here. So that looks pretty, pretty good. On the general setting, you have the about page, which gives you information about the salt pad and all that kind of stuff. Uh, display and brightness is obviously pretty standard. You can lower the display brightness and you can even have it automatic, which apparently is unclickable at the moment. So you learn something every day and you also have dark mode, which is pretty cool. So dark mode, actually, I prefer that a lot. I, I, I like dark mode everything. So dark mode is always preferred. Aircraft. Now, a lot of these settings you would have previously had to do on the FMS or the flight management system down here, the FMC, flight management computer. And I believe you can still do it if you go onto the menu screen. And if you go into settings, you will be able to change some of this stuff like moving your ND up mode, your IRS align time, as well as your in-flight fuel configurations and stuff like that. But now you have the ability, like other modern airliners, like I said in the intro, to do all of that on the aircraft screen here as well. So you can move your ND track up to uh, turn that on. You can also do automatic fuel management, a sim bridge port, as well as you can adjust the IRS alignment time in case you want it realistic, which I usually prefer when I'm setting up the aircraft. You have the accelerated option and you also have the instant option. So pretty cool stuff. And finally, you also have a cars availability. So you can get some weather data from various different sources. You obviously have METAR, you have TAF, and then you also have an ATIS source in case you're trying to get it uh, default from Microsoft Flight Simulator. Next up then, this is one of my favorites actually, let's check out the weather app. So into the weather here, you can see it's automatically populated Charlie, Yankee, Victor, Romeo. And as is the case with the rest of the UI on this iPad, you can see that it also emulates the iPad UI. So you can see the time at the top left, you can see the actual date at the top left as well. And you can see all of the weather conditions that you could possibly need to conduct a safe flight from here out to anywhere you want to go. So you have the wind availability, visibility, the Q&H. Uh, it's in 30.06, which is inches of mercury, but I don't know if you can actually change that to um, to millibars or hectopascals. There, that, that could be something we can actually check out. In fact, that's something we can check out right now. So if we go into the settings mode, next page, 
I don't believe you can actually change that. I think this is all done um, because uh, like using the global settings that you have set up in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So that's something interesting that um, I'll either be checking out or hoping that they end up uh, allowing us to change on the fly. Of course, you can go down to this drop down menu and select anywhere in the world to kind of see what the weather is like. So EGLL Heathrow, it's gonna take a second and it's gonna populate all of that data. And of course the background here also changes depending on the weather conditions. So let's say we have Singapore, it's probably gonna be sunny there, or it's actually kind of cloudy there too. Uh, I'm looking for a sunny place so you can actually see what the sunny background might look like. Uh, let's say, um, what's one place that you know is gonna be sunny? Maybe Mexico? There we go. It's a little bit more sunny, but they have different backgrounds is what I'm trying to say. Pretty cool stuff. Next up then, of course, is the ground services app. So if we go into the ground services, we can open certain doors. Now, one thing I've already noticed is that I use GSX to get this door connected or this jetway connected to the aircraft. And that has automatically prompted the left one left passenger door to open up. You also have the option to open up door five right as well as the forward cargo door. So let's see what that looks like on the outside. Beautiful. So the modeling is done pretty well there. And you also have the ability to board passengers as well as um, this is mainly for catering trucks, I would say, uh, at the back right of the aircraft. So maybe new GSX profiles will now be created by the rest of the community that will be able to leverage these changes to the 747. So pretty cool stuff there. We also have the ability to uh, request some default ground services from, um, from Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you have jetway, fuel truck, baggage truck, and catering. We can request these and see what happens. First things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of this jetway. So as you can see, it automatically uh, closed the door one left here, and you should see that the jetway will swiftly start to depart here as well. So there we go, it's gone. And now we can actually request the jetway uh, through this menu and see what happens. There we go. So it understands that you want the jetway. Now you can control everything here. So I know a lot of people don't have GSX Pro. So if you don't, you obviously have the ability to do all of this through the EFB now on the Salty Simulation 747. On the ground services app, you also have the fuel and payload configuration where you have this neat little map that shows you everything. And you also have SimBrief implementation. So you can actually download your latest flight plan from SimBrief and then automatically all of these values will be populated. So let's try to import that data. Let's click on the SimBrief button. And there we go. That's all the data that's automatically imported. And then once you hit refuel and load, I'm pretty sure it's going to start changing all of these values depending on whatever is planned. So let's go back to the main screen and let's see what this maps window looks like. So the maps window actually shows you where exactly you are. It's a moving map. It's pretty simple. And if you have a Navigraph premium subscription, uh, then Salty Simulations recommends you just use the Navigraph map on the EFB as well. However, uh, if you don't have a Navigraph map subscription, this is a good way to kind of see where you're going even when you're in the air, it's going to show you where you are, what country you're flying over when you're doing those long haul ops and, uh, and so on. So this is a pretty simplistic app in that sense. Next up, then let's check out the Navigraph app, which is of course called this charts app. So alrighty, so my phone says that everything is logged in and that's perfect. There we go. We have all of the login credentials completed and we have the Navigraph app on the iPad as well. Now, this is pretty standard now, uh, I would say across most major airliners that are present in the sim, but it's pretty cool that you can actually see some taxi maps as well here. You can actually see the taxiways and taxi signages and everything like that directly built into this view. So. I personally, I personally think that that's pretty cool. Now you can also obviously turn this into dark mode for night ops, you don't have to be blinded by this screen. You also have the uh, choice of going VFR, IFR high, world, as well as IFR low maps. So once again, pretty cool there. And we can also go into this flight mode and say new flight or just import it directly from SimBrief. So if I say import from SimBrief, which is our data, so we have uh, origin as Charlie Yankee Victor Romeo, which is Vancouver, and we're going to Frankfurt. We also have our um, runway information populated, our waypoints populated, and our alternative airport populated as well. And all of our charts relevant for this uh, specific flight are also here. So we have noise abatement procedures, uh, for stars, we have all of these stars available. I, I guess we can uh, we can select which specific star that we want to take and then kind of go from there. So we just scroll this and then we can look for the specific star that we're going to be taking in our journey and then kind of populate it like that. But point is that all of these stars and SIDs and all of these charts are available for both airports. So you can go ahead and cycle between Vancouver and Frankfurt or Hanover, which is also the alternate airport. So you have all of these now directly in the flight, which is once again, 
pretty, pretty cool. And the final app here that I'd like to show you guys is of course this Files app, which is again modeled after the iPad, where you can actually get your operational flight plan. So as soon as you load up a Simbri flight plan, it automatically puts that flight plan here as a PDF so you can view your entire flight plan. So this is just one I made, DLH-1603, just a random flight number. And, um, and yeah, so... Overall, I believe this is a pretty good update that actually brings the 747 up to par with a lot of other airliners in the sim, and I believe it's actually viable now, especially with all the working title updates. Now, I haven't actually flown an entire leg or sector with this aircraft yet, so if you guys want to see something like that on the channel, uh, us going from point A to point B to see actually how the Salty Simulations flies alongside, of course, using this beautiful EFB, then do let me know down in the comment section below. So if you guys enjoyed or found this video helpful or informative, if please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with everything new happening in the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. With that all said, guys, thanks for watching and thanks for flying by.